All right, man, Torture Talk. 12 o'clock show, 12 o'clock show, everybody. How y'all doing out there? I hope y'all good. Hope y'all real good. You know what I'm saying? So today, we're going to be talking about Drake. Did he ever battle Kendrick? Was he wheelchair Jimmy? Or was he Drake? And this guy, he has a fascinating video that I want y'all to see. And um, he breaks it down. So look, we're going to get to that. Before I get into that, you know I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk, the 12 o'clock show. Hey, 12 o'clock show. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen. Thank y'all for all the donations. I really appreciate it. Cash App, PayPal is in the description. All that good stuff. They called me the hidden gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over to over 11,000. About to be 12,000, a million by Monday morning. Let me know where you're from, too. I really appreciate that. So we're going to get right to it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to the video. And uh, we'll be back to discuss, man. You know. All right, man. So look, we're going to get to this video. And... Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to this guy when I put him in the description. <laughs> right, did Drake just battle Kendrick Lamar or did Jimmy Brooks battle Kendrick Lamar? I was recently going through some of the diss tracks that Drake sent towards Kendrick and they sounded, they sounded very jovial. They sounded very youthful, very high schoolish. And then it started to make sense. As a person who grew up watching the grassy, don't knock it till you try it. It's a good show. Aubrey Graham, AKA Drake is still stuck within the Jimmy Brooks character. Drake is still Jimmy. Let's get off into it. Let's talk about it. everybody it's your boy read my soul and i'm back with another video for you hope everybody's doing well hope everybody's being blessed yes if you're watching this you're on the right side of history get up go make it an amazing day and my favorite saying of 2024 is i'm not here to be right i'm just here to be me and if you are looking for the right opinion i don't know where you can find that but if you're looking for my opinion you are in the right place <laughs> so let's get off into it man there have been a lot of deep dives into the art one thing I want to say about people, um, I guess that's why I'm a little more, I'm going to say a little more successful. So I'm not really successful yet. I'm successful, but I noticed this about a lot of people. They do a lot of jump cuts. I try not to do no jump cuts. I try to be as authentic and as flowing as possible. You know what I'm saying? If I have to do a jump cut, I will, but I try not to. And I promise you, I'm not high. I don't get high. I know my eyes seem low and I'm not tired either. I just that's just how my eyes sit. I'm just a sexy, sexy guy. Yeah, you know I'm saying I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just a sexy guy. You know what I'm saying? I just have sexy eyes. Anyway, but uh, yeah, let's keep it going, man. Just that we know as Aubrey Graham, aka Drake. And as a person that grew up watching the grassy, like I said in the intro, don't knock it till you try it. You made me do this. <laughs> I haven't seen one that linked the. <laughs> this is vindication for a lot of people. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. I I'm afraid to run that back because I might laugh for like 15 minutes. <laughs> And as a person that grew up watching the grassy, like I said in the intro, don't knock it till you try it. You made me do this. I haven't seen one that linked the character of Jimmy Brooks to the character that is. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm chill. I'm a chill. Oh, I'm a chill. 
Oh. <laughs> okay. Ah, right, here we go. Drake. But let's start oh my with God. my experience with the Grassy. When I started watching the Grassy, I was in oh. a very tough time in my life. My mother had got married to an individual and she was gonna move us out of New York City into a house into Baltimore, Maryland. Now, I didn't know that Baltimore, Maryland was pretty terrible and I'm pretty sure my mother didn't know. She was just looking for help. She was a single mom, had me and my brother and she was looking to, you know, get us out of the city, get us into something better. At least what she thought was better. It didn't really work out, so it failed. Because it failed, my mother came back to the city. We came back to the city my mother didn't have a job we really didn't have a place to stay we gave up everything we had a hard time so we jumped back forth place to place and then we decided to go into the shelter so we can actually get us a place so we could stop jumping back and forth from place to place and during that time i would go to my godparents house and i would go over to my all right first of all i want to say i apologize for that i'm sorry for that happened to you very sad that you know people like us we do uh go through traumatic experiences like that and uh, I look like I got tears in my eyes, but it's, it's from me laughing because <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, let me get serious. But um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry that that happened to you, brother. Appreciate you cousin's house and we will watch the grassy now the grassy was a really good tween drama show i didn't know it was in canada i didn't know drake was jewish and canadian i actually gravitated towards drake because he was the only black male character on the show he played basketball and he liked the rap sounded good to me so i watched drake i watched drake before he became drake and he was only known as jimmy in the wheelchair and if you know anything about being a child actor a lot of child actors orlando brown raven amanda Bynes, a lot of child actors they go through a lot of trauma as we are just now seeing a lot of documentaries like what happened with Nickelodeon in the 90s with Dan Schneider. We see that a lot of people think being a child actor can be very dangerous. There's never been anything to come out about anything traumatic happening to Drake during the grass scene, but I know it must have been difficult for him. An identity crisis just makes so much sense. Now, when Drake was on the grass scene, the grass scene started around 2001, so Drake was in between the ages 14, 15, and 16. Now, if you know anything about those ages, you're just now starting high school, you're really hitting puberty, things are really starting to change for you. You might be out there doing something a little bit more with girls. It's a hard time. Me personally, Personally, watching the grassy, I remember it so vividly because I was going through a traumatic experience on top of trying to find myself. So imagine a 14, 15 year old Jewish, Canadian, biracial child actor trying to find himself at 14, 15 when he's now taking on a Jimmy Brooks character. You're trying to figure out. All right, so I don't really know if. I don't really know if Drake was actually messed up from that. I mean, I get I get the correlation. I mean, they say a lot of people say that mixed children do have uh, more time uh, <clears throat> to actually, well, not more time, but more, um, more, they have more to think about because they don't know where they fit in at. I mean, I guess that could be, that could be uh, true for, you know, for, for certain demographics, I guess. I don't know. It also depends on where you grew up at. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. So who knows how he really felt? Like, I can't really say how he felt. I guess you can assume because he's mixed, he's biracial, he's Jewish. You can assume that he's a little confused, but no one really knows, but I guess, I mean, maybe he's going to explain how he feel. Let's go. Who you are and where you fit in this world. Now you have to take on a whole nother persona. The reason why I bring this up is because Terrence Howard has a clip of him in Oxford. And no, not the clip when he starts talking about, you guys believe in straight lines? Ooh, not that. Before that, he actually dropped this gem. A lot of actors end up with um, personality, identity crisis, and conflicts. You have so many characters you're playing. And if you really commit to the character, you become like a piece of clothing. And the character has a tendency of wanting to own you. If you are an actor and you want to do your job well, the character lives within you. Like Terrence Howard says, you as an actor, you take all these characters on. And if you, if you let them, that character will take over you because they want to get out. We know this to be the truth. At least that's the theory. It happened to Heath Ledger with the Joker. They say that the Joker character consumed him and he couldn't get out of it. What you saw in Anthony Hopkins and Hannibal Lecter, that monster lives in him. That's why we believed it. Jamie Foxx, Ray, 
and Heath Ledger, the Joker. Those are the two best acting. <clears throat> um, this is a very fascinating uh, video, by the way. I don't know why it seems like I'm looking at the video. It looks like it's a little blurry. I'm trying to make sure it's not blurry. So that's why I keep uh, messing with the focus. Um, yeah. What he said about Heath Ledger, and I think there was a little more to Heath Ledger and what happened with him, but I understand exactly what he's saying. Like, there's there are when you when you there's, there's someone that says something about me on here, and I, and I thought it was funny, but it's kind of true. She said, "You are a character." That she said about me, right? And I and I think I actually think that that's true. <clears throat> You do have to understand that there's a thin line between sane and insanity. And sometimes people play with that line. And you can get consumed by the character that you portray to be. And I think that what he's saying about Heath Ledger, what he's saying about Anthony Hopkins, and what he's saying about <clears throat> about uh, 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 Jamie Foxx when he played Ray, is you become that. Now, Jared Leto did that too, but most people didn't take to Jared Leto's Joker because Jared Leto came after Heath Ledger. So Heath Ledger Joker is legendary. I like Jared Leto's Joker too, but I think a lot of people didn't give him a shot because of that. But that's another story. Either way, I get what he's saying. Let's keep it going performances I personally have ever seen. Jamie Foxx embodied the role so much so that he started to do songs with Kanye West and he was Ray outside of the television show. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the TV. This is a trifling friend indeed. I think the Jimmy Brooks character is still stuck within Drake. <laughs> I don't think he can get out of it. Taking on such a, a tough role as an adolescent, you are a biracial Jewish Canadian kid in Canada, and now you're in a wheelchair and your hoop dreams are deflated. My basketball career, my whole future, it's gone. But just think about all of that Bro, I'll be the laugh, but. <laughs> oh my God. It's just funny, man. I'm sorry. It's funny. Puberty, <laughs> all of that trying to find yourself and you have to be this child actor and your family may be relying on you for money. You don't really know where you fit in. There's been plenty of videos of Drake talking about the slang in Toronto. I say man's like you. Yeah, yo, so man's like you are going to that and then just things like you do. Crew. That's interesting. It's not. It's really ignorant. And how it's immature and foolish because he's basically cold switching like we all do we all cold switch maybe on planet ebonics but where i come from we like to pronounce our e's and our r's to black folks we gotta have a conversation about cold switching we all do it but imagine being drake trying to cold switch and navigate this world that is just biracial black and white jewish canadian kid child actor that is a lot to be dealing with at the tender age of 14 15. i think the trauma that happened to Drake when he was young was not ever being able to find himself, not ever being able to put the Jimmy Brooks character down and pick Aubrey Graham up. And I think what he did was he created another persona called Drake. It's really got me out here rapping what I'm living. I might take it latest girl a cover like on Ricky. And isn't it a little funny that Drake wanted that's a, <clears throat> that's a that's a really good correlation, brother. I never thought about that. That's a really good correlation. People did say Drake is a child actor. He's an actor. But I understand exactly what he's saying now. <clears throat> See, sometimes you don't know everything. <clears throat> I don't know everything. I definitely don't know everything. Uh, I got a lot of things wrong in my life. And probably going to continue to get a lot of things wrong. Opinionated pieces is a little bit different. But I understand exactly what he's saying here. Basically saying, like, and this is what everybody's been saying in the comments that Drake's an actor, but he basically said that he created this whole persona. Now, granted, artists create their personas. Some of them live it out. Some of them basically leave it at the job. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but what he's saying makes sense. 
This is really good. Be a rapper on the show. So much so that Drake would actually had a hard time on set because he would stay up all night making music. At least that's what they say. So for me, I was listening to Push Up. It's like, how the fuck you be stepping with a size seven man's on? It's like, well, he can't really do much about his size. You got a fake BBL. Like God gave him his shoe size. You went to the surgeon to get your abs. Anything I say goes over Kendrick's head. He always said I overlooked him. I was staring straight. It's like a lot of just short jokes and a lot of like gossip tea. Like, oh, oh wait, I get it. And it's just like, None of it hit to me. It just felt like a high schooler, your mama jokes in the back of the lunchroom, just a bully just trying to make fun of a short kid. It These boys go over Kenny here no matter what I say. Comes to getting girls. This man has Damn. <clears throat> now he's making me look at uh Family Matters totally different now. <laughs> Let's go. No take. Your breath stank. Here's some goddamn toothpaste. Oh! And as I started to reflect upon it, I said, oh, dang, Drake is still Jimmy. The rich nigga, poor nigga, house nigga, feel nigga. Still Jimmy. And if you watch the show, a lot of things that happened to Jimmy Brooks correlate to Drake's life. Drake didn't really have his dad in his life. He was doing this. He was doing that. He was in Canada. His dad was in Memphis. His dad was, you know, into music. And Papa was a Rose Stone more than likely. We've heard that story before. Black American dad story. When you really look at it, Drake's father in the show, Jimmy Brooks' father, he caught his father cheating on him. He actually confronted him about it. His parents were never home. Jimmy Brooks' character actually had a lot of money. And he was kind of like left to fend for himself because his parents were always working. Mom just called to tell me that her and dad are working late again. She said I should order myself a pizza. Well, why don't we have your birthday at my house then? As you seen in that clip there, he was trying to enjoy his birthday, took his girlfriend home at the time, and there was no parents there. So a lot of that turmoil in Drake's life with the Jimmy Brooks character probably like went together and he probably didn't really know how to handle it. Character I play with Lucius, his life is is filled with turmoil. So 90% of the day I'm walking around carrying his turmoil and also the turmoil for me and my own family. How do you have time to really bring yourself back to who you are? Probably made him a better actor because he was actually going through that in his life, going through an identity crisis, trying to figure out where he fit, trying to figure out who loved him. Think about it, the Jimmy Brooks character has his parents not there. Eventually he catches his father cheating. His hoop dreams were kind of deflated because somebody lied on him and blamed him for something that he actually didn't do. I ain't gonna lie, if you ain't watched Degrassi a couple of first seasons, you need to go watch Degrassi first season. Up until Drake got shot and a little bit after that, that drug was good. Bro, that joint was fire. If you start peeling back, <clears throat> I'll pass. Layers of the, of the Jimmy Brooks character, you're like, oh wow. Drake might not have been able to shake that character. In order to cope, he created the Drake persona and it worked. And now he's this mega artist and he can't really put the ball down and go home. He still has to continue to be on camera, be on stage, be tap dancing. While I was editing this real quick, I was thinking about all the things Drake does in order to maybe relive out his high school years. And I was thinking about him hanging out with Lil Yachty, dating 25 year olds and making music with younger artists. You know, a lot of younger artists have been writing for him and things like that and then i also thought about these uh basketball tournaments that he holds in his house you know they uh win trophies and win championships he announces it as if he really won something and it just screams of a person trying to recreate something or trying to relive something they maybe didn't have as a child you know they say the same thing about michael jackson and never never land you know him creating a amusement park in his house because he didn't have a childhood and i think the same could maybe be said for drake when he throws these tournaments in his home because maybe the jimmy brooks character got his hoop dreams deflated or maybe the drake character got his hoop dreams deflated and maybe the real uh, uh aubrey graham got his hoop dreams deflated and never got to experience some of those things that uh many of us did during our high school years so it was just something that i just wanted to add in there real quick but go ahead and get back to the main video peace you know this that boy good <laughs> i can't even lie i used to play ball i was good as hell in ball damn drake's pretty good in basketball i didn't even know that this is the first time i've ever seen that clip he's he he's he's moving up the pit he's really good i can tell a person's level i played basketball for years i can tell a person's level in ball and he is pretty good from what i'm seeing yeah he's he's pretty good you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna say he's a professional player but 
he definitely would be one of the guys I would pick <laughs> to be on the team. <laughs> I'll pick Doodle Ball. Give me Doodle Ball. <laughs> it's not a we should feel sorry for Drake thing, but it's a, something I haven't seen. And I think a lot of people didn't really watch the Grassy. Like I said, I went to my cousin's house who had a little bit more paper than me, had them extra channels, because I think you had to watch it on Noggin. You had to have a Noggin channel. And you was a broke boy, you ain't had Noggin, you ain't see the Grassy in America. As a person who went through a traumatic experiences in life, young, right? When I was 15 years old, around the same time Drake was starting the show, my cousin Nathan Osbrook was murdered and killed in Harlem, New York City. Nota Kanate. So I went through that traumatic experience, experience and then nine months later, I had a kid at 16. We'll talk about that one day. But I went through a lot of trauma during my youth. So I know how it is and how, how it feels to be stuck there and not be able to grow past it. So when I look at Drake, when I look at his sense of fashion, he doesn't have sense of fashion. He's always following trend. And fashion is just, it's not for Drake. I think Drake, his best fashion is when he was about to sign with Adidas and he was wearing like the track pants and he was wearing some of the Yeezy. That's when Drake actually dressed the best. He don't really dress well. Like he follows these fashion trends like he's in high school and that happens amongst artists that happens amongst celebrities but it's a certain point where like you'll be like all right this fashion sense this fashion this thing right here doesn't fit me and i don't really want to go into the fact that he likes younger women that is just a thing men with power they that's what they do that's actually the preferred situation young women like older men because they provide security older men like young women because they uh they're a little bit more easy to like you know shape to how you want to shape them like what Bro, what are you talking about? I guess that's called grooming. I shouldn't see. No, I don't agree with that. Some for some men there, that's true, but not all. There are some older men who literally don't do that. And um, that's a whole separate video for that, but let's go. That, but, but that's what power does powerful people they date young that's just what it is so i don't want to drive into that but maybe that has an effect too maybe he can't find love because he's still heartbroken for what happened when he was in high school do you understand what i'm saying as far as child actors going through a lot of trauma and i think the main trauma child actors go through is that they have to find themselves and they have to find a character and then once that character is done i don't think they know who they are anymore i think shia buff is, is a great example of a person who has no clue who he is and he's just pulling for straws. If you look at Shia LaBeouf's acting career and all the things that he did with the tattoos and all of this method acting that he did, I think he was trying to find himself because he never got an opportunity being even Stevens. I don't think he's ever, ever been able to, to know who he was. And I think that is the same for Drake. Like I said, being that young and going through trauma myself, I feel for the kid. I feel for the guy a little bit because it seems as though, if you listen to Champagne Poetry, I always go back to Champagne Poetry. He says his career is going up, but his personal life is fading slowly. And that bar just stuck with me because of some of the best Drake rapping in years. But it just stuck with me because it seems as though he lost a little bit of his soul. And that's all I have for today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I release. All right, man. Definitely going to put him in the comment section. I mean, uh, the uh, description. Yeah, that was a pretty good video. Um. There's a couple of things he said in there that I I agree with, like at least 90% of what he said. Some things I don't agree with, um, you know, but that's neither here or there. It was just a great video. I think that uh, we do have to we do have to uh, visit whether Drake is living out his uh, fantasy of, of a character that he had made from Aubrey Graham to Drake. I definitely think that Aubrey Graham is in the studio. Drake is in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Because if you watch the the the, the uh what they call it, the hundred gig drops, you can tell that he's using his real voice and he he's looking at it from the point of view of of uh this is not real beef. This is just this is just um just music it just a, it's just all a part of the story that I'm creating that's what I think Drake is he looks at it from or Aubrey he looks at it from Drake is just a character he's a gangster he is he is the guy that people fear you know what I'm saying but when he goes into the studio and you see that in the 100 gig drops he's not saying he's talking to the way he talks to his mom it's not the same way that he talks to other people when he's out in the streets 
you could see that. So, but uh, yeah, man, that was a really good video. Either way, 12 o'clock show over. Make sure y'all here for the six o'clock show. I love y'all, man. Y'all have a good day. See y'all. Peace. Bye. I'm out of here, man. Go on. <laughs>